Tubas had did something on the dots. I never will forget. This had to be like oh nine. Maybe at 08, the band would break off into dance block. We would mm-hmm. be in front of the alumni house, right? We was over there running fanfares instead of playing the dance block music or whatever. Mm-hmm. We, we thought we had it. So Hood came over there going up. <laughs> and he was just a fuss. You want to be playing? And he turned around. And so it was dark outside, of course. Mm-hmm. And he started walking away. We quiet. Then he was like, another thing. He turned around and stepped into a big hole. Yes, sir. Welcome back to another episode of the Let Me Hear You Word podcast, y'all. My special guest, Mr. Courtney Smith. And, you know, tell them, introduce yourself to everybody real right quick. What's up, fam? Courtney Smith, Pine Bluff native. Um, I graduated from UAPB in 2012, I think. 12. Um, happily married man, local pastor. Uh, school teacher as well, so that's a little bit about me. Okay, so what, um, when did you march in the band? I crabbed 2006 um, to fall 2009. Okay, that's when I what did, did you so, play? Uh, sousaphone, okay. section leader. So well, give me a little background about, um, I guess, how you got into music and like how you got into like to the band scene or what made you... Get, get a love for band, you know. Live off so, that. Ron, like, um, I'm going to sound like the dude off the drum line, right? So, <laughs> I grew up around music. I'm a church boy, so, you know, <laughs> playing keys and mm-hmm. drums. Drums was actually my first instrument. Before I switched to brass, I played bass, drum, and snare. Um, but growing up around music in church, just kind of gravitated toward it. I can sing and all that type of stuff, so... Just knew I wanted to do some type of thing with music, so got into that. Started band when I was in like sixth grade, mm-hmm. beginning band. Um, that's when I started playing snare drum. Okay. I played drums all through junior high, and then my first year of high school, then I switched to baritone my 11th grade year, mm-hmm. two in my 12th grade year. What made you switch? We needed some low brass. <laughs> okay. So, you know, <laughs> I stepped up. So, you already know how to read music from um, before? Actually, music? no. So I was the type of cat that just had a strong ear. Yeah. And so if I heard it, I could play it. Mm-hmm. If, you know, it didn't matter what it was, if it was a, a melodic part or a rhythmic part, if I could hear it, I could play it. Okay. And so reading music did not actually kick in until my freshman year. And I think it was really the benefit of prep theory, because I was a music major, of course. Mm-hmm. Prep theory really helped me out. Um, but I struggled reading music. I'm, I was the type, I wasn't writing fingerings over the, the music, but yeah. I definitely would put a note or two over there. <laughs> you know? But uh, no, I just didn't, coming out of high school, uh, the fundamental, I guess, was just not really strong or enforced. So, you know, you just kind of did what you did. and became a chameleon you just fit right, it in yeah. so and you you learned it by rote you mm-hmm. know so that was pretty much what it was and so um but yeah high school not so much college not so much sec- except for after freshman year oh, wow. but after that boom through it doc okay and you went to the Donnelly high school did. Oh, correct so how, what made you decide to go to APB? i was on my way so i was torn between three schools mm-hmm. UAPB was not my first option, really because I'm from Palm Bluff. You know how yeah. it is, people from Palm Bluff, you ain't really just trying to stay home for real. You want to venture out, spread your wings, all that type of stuff. So I was torn between Gremlin and UAM. Um, I'll never forget it. Um, I had applied for UA, uh, for uh, Gremlin, um, and Dr. Pennell came to a battle of the bands in West Helena that we was at, and uh, he auditioned me on the spot. In while we was warming up to get ready to go mm-hmm. compete, him and Mr. Lacey, who used to be the low brass guy at the time, yeah. um, auditioned me, gave me a full scholarship. I kid you not, Mr. Lacey was calling me every other week, like, 
We need you to come to Grandma. We need you to come to Grandma. Grandma threw so much money at me. They had like ambassador scholarships because I had I was a smart guy, so my academics <laughs> was on point. So um, academically, they were throwing me so much money plus a man scholarship and all of that. Then UAM, they was core style, but I just wanted to do a little something different or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's um, and so actually, coming to UAPB was almost a last minute choice. Um, uh, Mr. Graham called me. Uh, my band director had had him called James Liddell. He's dead now. Mm-hmm. He had him call me. He talked me into coming to UAPB to audition. Um, I had knew Mr. Hudson already, and so when I seen HUD, this was in the old band room. It was with the before your time, probably. Mm-hmm. You had the <laughs> two hallways that only one person could fit down at yeah. a time because it was so narrow. HUD's office was right there. So when I was coming through, I stopped and I said, like, how you doing, Mr. Hudson? What's up? You know, he was all short and stuff, whatever. <laughs> yeah. You come to audition? And I told him, yeah. He was like, bet, go down there and see Mr. Evans or whatever. Mr. Evans auditioned me, uh, gave me a full scholarship on the spot. So I prayed about it, and uh, Mr. Evans was like, you need to come, whoop de whoop your academics are sound, mm-hmm. all of that. And so the rest is history. I decided to come on, and uh, it really did help. I think church played a part, too, because then I had to be going to another church. And, yeah, yes, and then yeah. I was a musician, so I yeah. needed that check. I, and I didn't want to uh, I ain't want to go nowhere else, and they already yeah. had a musician. I couldn't get paid on Sundays. Okay. You know? yeah, sure. But, yeah, so that's pretty much what it was, man. Okay, so... One of the most things you're known for um, was being an arranger for the band. So when did you, how did you start grasping, you know, arranging? So what's crazy is that strong ear kicked in, yeah. right? So I would dibble around with, it was a program called Finale Notepad at the time. I don't even know if they still had it. I think they still do. Finale yeah. Notepad, you could only use like maybe like nine staves or whatever. Mm-hmm. So Carrie Clayton, was already writing music, but he was like assistant at Dalloway's band mm. at the time. And so um, I just started dibbling and dabbling with it. Using my ear, started clicking notes. When I tell you registers and ranges, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I was just going yeah. based off solely what sounded right. Uh-huh. Then I put that thing in concert pitch, so everything <laughs> was all in one dot. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I just started doing that. My rhythms were correct but they was complicated looking you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying uh so it was a challenge but uh i started doing it through my like my 12th grade year and then i started writing for uapb my sophomore year which was in 07. okay yeah okay. first song i wrote for uapb was loose as a goose by boosie <laughs> you might have to go ahead and in the archives pull that back it up, was a one sheet of that <laughs> eight minutes with a repeat yeah, I can I, I can never express how um how much you done for me. Uh, you definitely been a mentor for me as a ranger. I never forget, you know, um tenth grade, I was at Pine Lope High and I was using music score at the time. Mm-hmm. It's like a, a free a free program to use right music. At first you tell me like how the how the rhythms look complicated, yeah. how they're supposed to be how they're supposed to be separated by the beat and stuff like that. You know, and then, and I look at you, you're the <laughs> chief arranger around this kid. Yeah, camp. man. So it's between that and then you kind of just took me under your wing. You know, I sent you stuff. You probably got sick of it, baby. Uh, <laughs> it was good, brother. Like you, I mean, you had a gift at the time. Mm-hmm. And see, I didn't have anybody that just kind of gravitated to or just took me under my their wing and showed me the ropes. Mine was purely off observation. Mm-hmm. Like I would, I would look at. When I got in band, I would look at Hood's scores, mm-hmm. you know, or the music that we would be playing or whatever. And so I would get an ear for chords and stuff like yeah. that. Of course, I was taking theory, but at the beginning stages, you don't know how to orchestrate chords correctly and stuff like that. So you just kind of just playing with stuff. So yeah, and I can with me being, go with ahead. The, um, with your background playing keys. And stuff, exactly, easy, easy playing too. keys. But here's the thing, people would tell me, like Hud used to be amazed with me and Fred, because he used to be like, y'all write such and such, such a song. So we will go and write it or whatever. And he was like, how y'all come up to the chords? Y'all playing that stuff? And he was like, no, we just clicking. Yeah. Like literally clicking every single note. Mm-hmm. Like it was almost, you might as well say we hand wrote the music. Yeah. Because you know, some people can hook up their keyboard mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah. play it in and stuff like that. Nah, doc, we literally, 
<laughs> That's the note right there, you know. And so, but I never did have anybody to take me under my wing. It was just completely uh, observation, looking at what Fred was writing at the time. Uh, because Fred, my freshman year, Fred wasn't in the band. Uh, he was still in Memphis. He came back my sophomore year. So I'm like, who is this guy? You know, that's writing music. He wasn't even in the band last year. Yeah. But he was writing like "Makes Me Wonder" and stuff by Maroon Five. Mm. And I'm like, this he, he kind of cold, yeah. or whatever. So I would look at his stuff or whatever, and I would mm -hmm. be inspired. Then you had the old music that we was playing, maybe like by like "Say Yes," which is by mm -hmm. um, uh, Furlough and all those cats and stuff yeah. like that. So that was just you know just looking at some of the stuff that they would do. And I would incorporate pieces and stuff like that. And then, of course, HUD had strenuous rules for us when it came to arranging. Like, mm -hmm. if we was going to write for the band, no ending could end it unless it was a whole note or a quarter note tag. <laughs> All this new stuff that y'all doing now, he was like, nah, -uh. we not Southern. We not family. You. Yeah. you couldn't do nothing elaborate. It was straight whole note chords mm -hmm. and tags. And so, but it gave us a discipline as an arranger to right for a certain style mm -hmm. um to develop your craft within a box yeah for sure, um yeah. but still be creative at the same mm -hmm. time but having that structure it wasn't all bad so but yeah but it was just our observation yeah that's and that's something i um i definitely i guess i kind of did the same thing kind of though you know with and whenever i write some stuff you know i send it to you you know you give it critiques and stuff and then even in high school i always was very keen on Looking at you know where do we play some stuff by UAPB or another school, mm -hmm. you know I was like oh you know I see a Hamer or you know or somebody else I'm like okay so I'm okay okay how did he write this song mm -hmm. you know versus or I look, listen to you you may play the same song that year okay so what's the difference right so like that even Fred you know, I didn't I didn't even be Fred probably until. I was after you came on the yard, huh? Not even that, really. I didn't mean probably until I came off a of signal, really. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I, we didn't really just know each other. Um, but I always just, and I never even seen him before. But I always, it was just this picture of, you know, of the, all these songs, just you know, his style, mm -hmm. his style, your style, even Mr. Hudson, you know, even some other people like Armand Moore's and other people who write. You maybe those one or two hitters and stuff like that. Right. Um, and I guess that's and a lot of people. Some people will say that you know. With some of the stuff that we played last year, you know, that sounds like UAPB. You know, I guess because I kind of I, I studied. You grew up in the ranks, though. yeah. So I, I mean, you wasn't a a distant guy. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't me that was critiquing or offering you pointers and advice and mm -hmm. different things, you had hood. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or like you said, you were studying Fred, and we were for from 2007 until I think I stopped. My last arrangement for UAPB was what was. was uh, that yeah, smile uh, song, wasn't yeah, it? Mm -hmm. and that was in what 2016. Like, no, it was like 19, 18, 19, 19, actually. I'm getting old. Uh, yeah, it's funny because you retired. You <laughs> you said you retired probably like two or three times. <laughs> but I did. Like I don't, I don't even got finale no more, so I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. But yeah. uh, I think that was the last song I wrote. But mm -hmm. and I think uh, Josh Fletcher had to beg me to do that one. So really? yeah, <laughs> and that was that. But. Uh, you you grew up in the ranks, so you you knew that flavor. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it was hard for you. It wasn't hard. And then now you can do all the elaborate stuff that you want to do because you the H N I C that when it comes to that <laughs> to that arrange and stuff. So yeah. ain't no ain't no limit. Yes, sir. Um, so talk about your years as being an M4 announcer. I started announcing um, fall ten. Mm -hmm. So. It was crazy because um, I was not done with my degree, but I was done with band. Mm -hmm. I was not marching the fifth. I was adamant about that. Oh Lord, he tried, <laughs> and I was like, "No, sir, I couldn't do it." It, you know, they got the new instruments and the new uniforms. Now the new instruments didn't come that year. They got the new uniforms and they started rolling down all them different. I'm like, I ain't finna do all that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, I'm, I'm done. I had auditioned for choir. I talked to Dr. Bates. Oh, yeah. Dr. Bates was like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you could you could come. And Dr. Bates <laughs> was glad to have me. He was like, Yeah, he's like, I'll give you full scholarship. Yeah. Whoop de whoop. I was finna do Vesper. And then uh, Mr. Evans pulled me into my office. He was like, I know you used to announce for Dollar Way and Palm La Five. Mm -hmm. He was like, What you do it for? Uh, your PB, I said, hmm, I consider, or whatever. So he was really pulling for me. It was between me and a guy named Graylin Johnson. I don't know if you know Graylin. 
Um, Graylin's, uh, he was in Vesper. He sang bass, so his voice was like extremely deep. Mm-hmm. But um, Graylin needed to stay out of sauce. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, we would be out there on the field, on the docks or whatever, and uh, <laughs> Graham would have us going back and forth or whatever. So mm-hmm. I'd do a show run, and then Mr. Evans would just be like, <laughs> and then when, when Graylin would do his show run, yeah. Miss Evans just be sitting back with that leg crossed. <laughs> he was like, now, I'm my brother now. Um, I'm telling him, you need to be the one or whatever the case may be because um, you info or whatever the case may be. And, um, we need to go on and get you in there or whatever. Yeah. So anyway, he was really pulling for me. So um, I did it. I think my first game. Was the Alabama State game? No, the game after Alabama State in 10. Okay. Because um, Mr. Fuster was doing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, I love you, Mr. Fuster, but uh, <laughs> that announcement wasn't this strong point. Like, so, and so uh, <laughs> we got to do something or whatever. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, I started doing it then, man. So, but. Um, it was it was uh it was cool. I mm-hmm. never used a script. Mm-hmm. Everything would be memorized. Um, I took a lot from uh, from Berger, mm-hmm. who uh, and Lloyd. Yeah. Uh, those I preceded Lloyd. Mm-hmm. Succeeded Lloyd. Which which one is it? Succeeded. Succeed. I came after Lloyd. <laughs> and so uh, she said Lloyd was you know he had that voice. He was big shoes to fill. Mm-hmm. Or whatever, so uh, I just did me added a, a little flavor in there, you know, the whole get this band on the field. Yeah, that was completely all me. Yeah, yeah like uh, I think he would say the machine is fueled and ready, something like that. I never mm-hmm. used that line, yeah. um, but uh, it just became natural. Being a mm-hmm. DJ had everything in my head, uh, and that was that, man. And moving back to, I guess, when you were in the band, your marching years, what was your favorite? Band moment, or maybe a favorite and or embarrassing moment, or something, or something funny that you can share with the with the audience. Oh, uh, that I can share. Oh, <laughs> um, I got a lot of favorite band moments. Mm-hmm. I'll give two. Um, one was, uh, and I said this at Mr. Hudson's funeral when I preached it. Mm-hmm. Um, two was that did something. On the dots, I never will forget. This had to be like 09, maybe 08, because Toya Chipman was still in the band. And so Hud was fussing. He came over, we two of us would, the band would break off into dance block. We would mm-hmm. be in front of the alumni house, right? And so um, we was over there running fanfares instead of playing the dance block music or whatever. Well, we, mm-hmm. we thought we had it or whatever. So Hood came over there going up. <laughs> and he was just a fuss. You to be playing to the And he turned around. And so it was dark outside, of course. Mm-hmm. And he started walking away. We quiet. Then he was like, another thing. Da-da-da-da. He turned around and stepped into a big hole. <laughs> the hole was so big, bro. You didn't see none of Hood leg. <laughs> it was up to like yeah, his knee. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, he, he went down into his knee, and all we saw was this big blob <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> and you talking about, we like, did he die? What was going on? <laughs> we didn't know what had happened. And yeah. so you talking about, went to go help him get up. And he laughing. We dying laughing. <laughs> I mean, I was no more good for after practice. I had to go to the uh, home make building because I was yeah. done. I mean, I was fried. Like, it was so funny, bro. And he laughed the way I was. See, you see what y'all made me do? They gonna try to blame <laughs> yeah. us. Like, no, nah, he was over here fussing. But that moment was so funny. Mm-hmm. Then another moment, I think it had to have been in that same year. Um, it was an all-court game. It was in a storm. Really, really bad. Mm-hmm. The band was on the field. And uh, they actually suspended the game during halftime. We played the song called On a Boat. I don't even know who it's by. So we was out there playing the song or whatever, and it started thundering and lightning. Mm-hmm. We came out the field, and Mr. Graham was so upset. He got the band up underneath the uh, underneath the home side of the bleachers, yeah. 
And uh, I don't, this guy named Tim Clark. I don't know if you know yeah, Tim. Know yeah. Tim was talking or doing something. Mr. Graham must have went off on him. We was in the locker room. I mean, in the bad boys' bathroom. He's like, Tim, I will kick your. He told him I was going to kick. He told me he was going to kick that man. Tell him. But he <laughs> said the A word. But mm-hmm. anyway, you were talking about dying laughing. All you heard was. <laughs> <laughs> and then this guy, Rod Daniels, the whole mm-hmm. time Graham was giving his speech, Rod was in the bathroom flushing the toilet. <laughs> he kept flushing the toilet, bro. He's like, who keep flushing the toilet? <laughs> Boy, you talking about, we were some nuts. We mm-hmm. were just some plum fools, but that was funny. Yeah. I mean, that was some enjoyable times. That's, that's my story, man. So <laughs> tell me, what was the degree that you got when you graduated from here? So my degree from UAPB is uh-huh. in music. Okay. Um, and once I graduated from here, um, I started teaching in Jacksonville. I was mm-hmm. assistant in Palm Bluff High uh, for a little while until Mr. Lott retired. Mm-hmm. Um, after leaving there, which had to be around, see I graduated in 12, so it had to be in 13. Um, and I went to Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. I was a band director at Jacksonville Middle. Uh, with Mr. McField, who was at mm-hmm. the high school, yeah. uh, Jacksonville High School. And so um, I was there, and then once I left Jacksonville, I decided to go back and get my master's degree full-time. Mm-hmm. So I quit teaching to go pursue that, and I got that at Euler. Graduated from that, uh, from Euler with my master's degree in education in 16. Uh, and then I got a call to teach at my alma mater. It wasn't band, it was choral. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, uh, at this time, I had was spending all my savings, so I was like, "Let me go back to work." Mm-hmm. And so, uh, I took that job, and I've been teaching choir ever since. Uh, so it's been an interesting job. So that had to been actually, I was actually, I actually took the job before I graduated. So it had to be like in fall fifteen or so. Yeah, I've been at only eight years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then tell me about Destiny Worship Center. Well, it's the church I passed. When did you start that? So uh, I was the minister of music at a church called Greater Fellowship. Okay. Um, you familiar with it? That it's on Main Street. It's called yeah. Judah Restoration Worship Center now. Uh, minister of music there. And long story short, church drama, church split, right? So mm-hmm. Destiny Worship Center was created. In 2012, I became a worship pastor there as well. Um, I served there up until uh, 18. I started preaching in um, November of 13. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when I did my first sermon. Uh, got licensed then, got ordained in 17. Um, the pastor of Destiny, she decided that she was going to retire. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she appointed me to be her successor. Uh, and so in December of 18, I was installed full time as the pastor of that church. And so I've been the pastor of that church since December 29th of 2018 up until now. So, and I still am now. So, yeah. So it's a church located on 28th Street, a fast growing church, pretty urban and modern, um, nice young flavor, you know, uh, a different energy than what you would normally find okay. at most churches around here. But anyway, so yeah. Okay, I guess um, I guess any um, social media platforms y'all have? Yeah, you can follow us on Facebook at Destiny Worship Center Pine Bluff, okay. on Instagram at, at DWCPB, okay. um, and YouTube at Destiny Worship Center Pine Bluff as well. So okay. well, yeah. well, check us out. Check us out. Who can remember? Yeah, go watch us. <laughs> there y'all have it, y'all. We're going to take a quick intermission, and we're going to have a quick band video. We're probably going to play Hard as a House for y'all, arranged by yours truly, Ooh. Dr. Corey Smith. <laughs> so we're going to be back with y'all. Y'all stay tuned.
Welcome back, y'all. We have a quick little game segment. It's going to be a guess that song. So you're going to have four songs. They're going to be 10 seconds each. And you're going to get a point for each one. And we also going to have some lifelines where you can get one as a replay. So I can replay the song. Another one, I can tell them the year. And it's going to be the year that, of course, the band played it. You know, the video may be coming from whatever. But if it's like a, you know, say a 2000 edition of that band, it's going to be 2000. Um, and the last one is going to be like a hint, you know, it could be a word of, of the song of the title, you know, or if it's one word, I might just tell them, you know, the letter of the song or whatever like that. And then it's going to be a bonus round, and it's going to be a five-second clip. So if you want to do the bonus round, you can double your points, or you could lose all your points, you know. The last guy we had... He ran through all, all of them. So hopefully we can get somebody that's, you know, a little My less. My memory ain't as good. <laughs> somebody a little you. less, you know, you know, a little less in, uh, imperfect, whatever. Um, all right, so you ready? Yeah, let's do it, bro. Okay, here's the first song. That's a DMX song, right? Mm-hmm. That was played at the Swag Championship. Mm -hmm. What is it? Uh, down for my niggas or what my niggas? What you what you niggas want for me? Some what? close, close enough. Close. Enough. <laughs> I give you that. What's the name of the song? What they really want? Yeah, what they really yeah, want. Okay, I, I will give them that. I was the DMX that. <laughs> we'll give them that point. All right, here's the second one. That's Jay Z. That's Jay Z. Loose control. The band played it one year. That was Fall on Nine. Yeah. And that has to be the did. Jackson video, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, the band had that. Fred movie. wrote that. He put his foot in that one. Good job. <laughs> Shout out, Fred. It wasn't better than Brand New, though, but he did. <laughs> he did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's two points on the board, man. Here's the third one. Me, my, me, you, and Hennessy. Wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know the song. Light. You got some life on it. Shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I can't think of the title of the song, <laughs> man. I know you wrote it. Right? Fred wrote it then. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know the song. It had to be around 14, what was it? 15? Mm. 16? Mm -mm. It was before that? Yeah, you in the wrong direction. <laughs> so I was still announcing when that song was played? Yeah. So 12? Mm. Uh, do you want to, you got some yeah, lifelines. Okay. What's, 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 what's one of the lifeline you options? You can do a replay. I can Why tell I don't you know the name of that song, bro? A re we can either replay it, or I can tell you the year. Me, uh, something, something, or I can something. give you one word out of the song. Of the title. Give me one word. Chardonnay. Marvin and Chardonnay, something. Marvin, what is this, something? Marvin Gaye and Chardonnay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was saying it was, That was 2011. Whew. <laughs> that was 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, Damn. 10 years ago, man. Shout out to Fred on that one, too, y'all. All right. I'm saying me, you, and Hennessy. It was a liquor somewhere in there. <laughs> All right, here's some number four. Love Jones. Mm -hmm. I wrote it in 2013. The band only played this song one year. I wrote it off the, wrote it off the, off the, um, the theme song from the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was definitely a baby that year. I was watching Love Jones one night. And then I'm like, oh, this song will be tight. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just wrote it. Yeah. All right. So you got, so you're four for four right now, really. So do you want to do the bonus? Let's, we, let's roll with it. All right. So you can double your points or you can lose all of them. Here you go. It's only a five second clip. Why well, I can't think of the name of the song? <laughs> See, I'm not good with titles, bro. I know the song though. Uh, the band liked that song too. 
Give me the give me a, a thing. The replay or the year? Or no, I don't need a replay. <laughs> Can I get the uh, the title thing again? Which one? The words? Well, okay. So wait a minute. Let me see. <laughs> John, help me, man. <laughs> so, so the, for the title, it's technically uh, the something. Oh, um, uh, shoot! It's something tipped my tongue. I can't get it out. The weekend, it ain't him. That's the artist. Okay, it's it's him. That's the artist. But sure. I'm trying to think of the, the. We gotta start doing the countdown at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Why I can't think of this dude's song, man? <laughs> uh, yeah. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> if it ain't gospel, Doc, I don't know if you know these songs. <laughs> well, it's just somebody. It, y'all, what is it? The Hills. The Hills. I would have never got that. <laughs> the only Hills I know is uh, Look to the Hills from which come in my help. And all my help come from the Lord. <laughs> well, guess y'all have it. So he didn't get it right. So you lost all his points. Lost them all. It's all good. What was the prize? Well, you know, it, it depends who ever, it who's no ever prize. the lead. <laughs> who's, ever, no who's ever the winner at the end of the season, you know, they may get a little prize, but, you know. The info shirt. They're going to get a prize or something yeah, like sure. that. You feel me? Okay, now we know what that said means. So, a couple wrap-up questions. Okay. Um, how has M4 impacted your life? Um, First of all, M4, just being in the band and the school in general, Gave me lifelong friends. Um, if it ain't do nothing else, it gave me lifelong friends. People that are my ride or dies, mm-hmm. that were in my wedding, you know, invited to my wedding, um, you know, that I can call on whenever I need anything. You know, it gave us lifelong friends for sure. But it also prepared me when it came to like facing challenges and discipline and things of that nature. Um, gave me a greater appreciation for work ethic and, and what you do and, and earning, you know, your stripes, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it definitely shaped my mindset when it came to that, to have respect and pride about any and everything that you do, anything that you put your, your anything that you spend your time in, blood, sweat, and tears, you ought to want to make it, you know, the very best that it possibly can. And so um, it definitely you know, taught me all of those things. And so I'm grateful for that. Yeah, that's dope, man. If you could give, like, a Mount Rushmore or, like, the songs that you've written, like, what, what would those songs be? So I guess even your your personal favorite four songs that you ever wrote for that the I band? Have yeah. Um, I think fan favorites, you have to include The Hardest House for Love and Brand New. Mm-hmm. Um, just off top. Um, the other two I will reserve for, I think, were some of my best arrangements. Mm-hmm. I think my better, my one of my best arrangements was Have You Ever mm-hmm. by Brandy. In 2013. Um, yeah, that was one of my favorite. And then the Mokin Steph song. Um, I can't think of the title right now because I ain't good with titles. <laughs> um, oh, He's Mine. He's oh, mine. yeah. That was, I think it was 14. It was 14, one of the years. <laughs> But uh, He's Mine by Moke and Steph. Mm-hmm. I had so much fun with that arrangement. And um, the chordal structure. Uh, and the same thing with Have You Ever. When I go back and listen to it, I'll be like, oh, ooh. <laughs> I was on one with that one, <laughs> You know, just stuff like that. But so, And then uh, I was known as the ballad guy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you put a, any ballad song that was coming from my pen, it was, you know, it was probably going to be a hit. Mm-hmm. of some sort or you know um, I think a lot of things probably could have been styled differently if I had taught my music mm-hmm. but um, 
but yeah, those would be the four songs that I would probably put on, on my, as my, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. All right. And the last question, um, what was t- some advice for incoming freshmen and or graduating seniors from the university? Incoming freshmen. Don't waste your time. Um, don't waste your time. And what I mean by that is you got to be focused. And it's, it's easy to get sidetracked when, you get, when you're in college. It's a brand new world, and it's your best time of your life. But it's easy to get sidetracked. And before you know it, that four years, if you ain't did what you're supposed to do, will turn into five, turn into six. It'll turn to you stalemating out and trying to come back or whatever. So you got to be focused. Don't waste your time. Um, come in with a plan. Stick with it. Um, and and just work it. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy, enjoy all of the things that come with the territory. Pledge, get your man, get your girl. Enjoy college. Mm-hmm. Enjoy these these pre twenty years or whatever because it, it becomes nothing but a distant memory and a vapor very very soon. Mm-hmm. Um, so enjoy the time, savor the moment, but you gotta stay focused and don't waste your time. For graduating seniors. If you graduate, I mean, get all of your kicking it out. (laughs) Enjoy this moment because when you get that diploma and, you know, life really starts for you, um, it's completely different. You are are working. You're trying to make a living. You're trying to build your career. You're trying to start a family. You're trying to do all of these things. And the amount of free time and the, the less amount of cares that you have while you're in college it like triples you know what i'm saying so you have so many different responsibilities that just all of a sudden come up on you so you know i would say to the graduating seniors go out and and conquer it do whatever you got to do to get where you're trying to get it um but then at the same time give yourself grace you know sometimes you won't land a job of your dreams that you went to school for uh, immediately graduating. You know, you sometimes life will throw an alternative route. Embrace it. Don't let it discourage you. You know what I'm saying? Don't let it um, get you sidetracked from what your ultimate goal is. Um, you got to stick with it. Hit the take the punches and keep on going. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but again, that comes with from that freshman year, having that plan, working it. You get to that graduation point, and now it's time to hit the ground running. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's it's different on the other side. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's different on the other side. Mm-hmm. If I could go back to say 2007, 2008, I would. Mm-hmm. I was smaller. <laughs> <laughs> I had hair. <laughs> you know, it was just yeah. you know I ain't had no gray mm-hmm. nowhere. So I mean, it was just it was just a different time. You know, uh, still living off mama's daddy dime. You know. Mm-hmm. Now you, it's a different pressure when you're out there on your own. So but, uh, just be prepared and trust yourself um, that you have what it takes and know that God will never leave you. Okay. Drop the mic with that one, man. Yeah. Well, you're a doc. <laughs> it's been a very great episode, man. It's one of my mentors I always enjoy talking to. That's good. Um, last, one last thing, though. Know. We got to have you do, since you are a former announcer, you know, if you could do like a little, a little, a little announcing here, the little, little script, the little pull on, little pull, yeah, the little pull on for us. You know, you, you ain't gotta give us, you ain't gotta go a hundred percent. You know, maybe uh, like seventy five, seventy six. Let me see. Let me, let me, let me, let me get in. Get in the zone. Let me get in the zone. <laughs> let me get in gear. Let me see. Marching band fans far and wide, do me a favor and let me hear you roll. Yes. Or that came from me too. Bernard took that one too. <laughs> but it, it came from me. Yes, sir, man. I appreciate y'all watching this episode, y'all. We're gonna have some more episodes coming out every week. Stay tuned.